Good afternoon, Jason here, Birchfield Family Farm, Oxford, Ohio. Good word today is from John 10.10. 10. These are Jesus' words. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Those are words that we embrace here on our farm. And I uh, hope you do as well. I hope that uh, you have hope today. There is hope uh, in Christ. And I hope that you always get that out of our messages. He's unchanging. He's loving. He's kind and compassionate. And we can come to him, uh, bring him our burdens. He gives us life. And speaking of life, there is life all around us out here today. We're going to do a cattle move, sheep move. Been a while since we've done a video. Uh, 40 days actually uh, from this day. So we're going we're gonna to do a move, show you what's going on. Okay, these guys are ready. Got the sheep uh, out here as well with the cattle, the, the ewes, the mama ewes. And uh, you can see see what we're coming off of here. Uh, we've been here. This is third day. So uh, we need to get off this. Look down the fence line here. I mean, you can see uh, just incredible. So that last live video I did the last time I was on here was 40 days, 40 days from today. I look back. And um, so you can see this has been 37 days of rest here. And... Um, this is looking pretty good. I mean, I would say for late July, uh, coming into August here, uh, pretty green, haven't had a ton of, of rain. Um, one other thing worth noting, all these uh, purplish flowers, these are, uh, this is chicory. And uh, chicory is a natural anthelmintic, which means uh, it's a natural dewormer. Uh, see, I've got my gate open over there. I need to close before we do the move. But um, Ohio State did a study on this stuff, and uh, it does have anthelmintic uh, properties to it. So um, excited about uh, having the sheep on this stuff, uh, especially when we get wet weather, when it's been dry. So uh, let's get this gate closed, get them moved over. That study from Ohio State, to uh, check that out. Uh, because they had some interesting findings um, saying basically that um, it's the, the chicory is not going to get rid of, of worms um, in sheep, but it will help them not to increase uh, their load was kind of the study's findings. Again, I'm paraphrasing. Look that up for yourself. Ohio State University uh, study on anthelmintics and chicory. So I'm stoked. We've never seeded. Never seeded this chicory. Uh, it's just always uh, come on uh, naturally. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, got a lot of the a lot of the grasses. I don't see as much clover in this section here, um, so they'll have access to this grass. Here's some here. Yeah, that's looking good. Mammoth red, uh, but not as much as the other the other paddocks. They are ready to move. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. You guys ready? Flies have definitely been an issue this time of year. They are bad this year. I put out a few traps, but uh, I can see we probably need to do a little more with our uh, cider vinegar spray we mix up. It doesn't last long, but looks like I need to do something there, especially on the bowl. He's, uh, they'll kick up some dust this time of year just to try and keep those babies down on their own, but we need to do something. Sheep. Oh yeah, loving this. So again, 30, 37 days rest <clears throat> on this one. If you remember, um, we were doing everything we could um, in the early spring season when it was wet um, to keep this soil covered. I wanted the moisture kept in. Uh, we did not mow. I have not mowed and you can see, you know, looking at this, um, you know, we've got a few thistles here. Some, uh, there's some chicory that they'll pick the flowers off of. They don't like it when it gets real stemmy, but uh, you can see here, I've got to do a little bit of removal 
bring a, a shovel out and get rid of that guy. Yeah, it's starting to get some seed heads there. That's no good. Um, so sheep and cattle will not touch thistle. Uh, it's been my experience. Here's another big one. But everything else, they've uh, they've absolutely uh, nailed here. So we'll drag the mineral over. And uh, I mean, it's just it's just funny, right? When you've got electric fences that are functioning properly. Oh, there's one that didn't get didn't get moved. But you can see the line, see the line all the way down where they've eaten under. I don't even have to weed eat under that line. So. This has been one of the weirdest years ever for honeybees and swarm traps. Um, here's a, one of the traps that I left out. Um, and just as of July here, we've had bees moving in. I've never, I mean, I've just been, I haven't removed the traps and now there's bees in there. I, I, don't, I don't know. So we have like three, we had one trap uh, back in May that filled up and we've got We've got three now that, uh, you know the old saying, I've said it here before, but uh, swarm in May is worth a load of hay, swarm in June is worth a silver spoon, and a swarm in July ain't worth a fly. So I guess that's just because um, they don't have time to put away stores for winter. I don't know. If you're a honeybee person, leave a comment. You think, think those guys will make it? Well, uh, I'm going to let them go. I'll see what happens. Uh, sheep and cattle, multi-species grazing here. This year we added two additional paddocks just to talk about what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> so we have a total of 10 quarter acre paddocks. We have an acre and a half that we overflow to uh, in this woods when we are through uh, the paddock rotation. And then we have another, uh, what do we have, a half acre up front there. Uh, where I this time of year you want to pull your rams off. I don't want uh, I don't want lambs in uh, you know November December. That's that's not a fit for grass fed. So we separate our our rams off uh, so that we uh, we'll put the rams back in uh, Black Friday, Black Friday or maybe a little bit sooner, uh, and that way we get uh, lambs uh, being born uh, that coincide with when the grass explodes. Anyhow, so that I, I believe we're at about we're at about five acres now out here that we're doing uh, rotationally, and um, gosh, what do we what do we have? Uh, we were up to two dozen, two dozen head of Saint Croix sheep, uh, seven head of cattle, and about fifty laying hens. So I know that's well above the uh, conventional. Uh, you know, one cow uh, per acre. I was just talking to somebody this morning about how uh, how pleased I am with this system, that it's it's working. We can see it. We measured it even with hay consumption um, at the end of last year, and it was 1.91 times conventional. So we were almost twice as productive in this five-acre rotational grazing system versus if we were to just turn animals out uh, for the season and let them continuously graze. And, uh, you know, just a, a word on that. I'm seeing quite a bit with the with the drought down south in Texas. Uh, if you guys are down there watching this, uh, heart goes out to you. I see the videos of the trailers lined up, right? You guys uh, having to uh, unload your, your uh, stock there. It's unfortunate. Um, you know, I obviously there's only so much you can do when you get in a situation like that where it's just extremely dry, you got nothing to work with. But I did see a post on a guy just encouraging folks to, uh, you know, have a sacrifice paddock uh, if you get too dry. Uh, he was kind of saying the temptation is just to, you know, open up those fences on a rotational grazing system, cut them, cut them open and let everybody just go wherever to buy yourself a little bit of time. But uh, he was encouraging folks, you know, don't do that. You'll regret it. Uh, you'll you'll hurt your you'll hurt your ground in the long run. Uh, so he his suggestion was, you know, have a have a sacrifice area where you can run them to uh, keep them in and, and feed out some hay or whatever you got to do uh, for the meantime. So that'd be a be a heck of a heck of a hard thing to go through. I know uh, some folks 
you know, getting rid of some of their stock, but they're kind of, sounds like from what I'm reading, kind of getting down to the bare bones on the, uh, the good, the good cattle that you got left behind and trying to make some tough decisions now about what the heck you do. So, a uh, tough spot to be in. You guys hang in, uh, down there and, uh, you know, praying for rain, right? Got to have that, got to have that rain to keep it going. But again, um, this dry season, we are definitely into that now here. Certainly not as bad as down south, uh, but every year, you know, there are the, the cycles. You get the, the uh, rain in the spring and the wet weather, and then, you know, July, mid-July through August, we start to transition into the dry time, and that's, that's why I let things shag. I did not mow. Uh, trying to leave that soil covered, let those roots go deep, and, um, you know, really kind of, if you remember, you know, I we were talking about how things look shaggy you know and that was hard uh, to kind of let things go right when you've got thistles and everything shagging and uh, you know why not mow it and take care of it the tendency you know is to make it look good right make it look good well that's not always the best um, for when conditions get dry I've discovered so I'm glad we left things uh, glad that uh, didn't come out and scalp this down uh, certainly would have gotten rid of some of that thistle in the weeds but I uh, wanted to err on the side of keeping in that moisture. So um, anyhow, hope you guys are well. Uh, feels good to get another video in here. It's been a while, but uh, hopefully we can hopefully we can do one or two a week and keep you guys in the loop on how the, the rotating is going. Hey, if you got questions, um, yeah, I know some of the videos we've done uh, have gotten a little more traction, especially when we say the number of animals we do and then the acreage. And there's always a tendency to cookie cutter what somebody else is doing and oh i can do that here that's not what i'm saying okay so don't misunderstand me i'm not telling you to do this um i'm not saying it'll work for you um so many different factors when you're grazing this way it really um it's there it's it's an art it's an art and you've got to learn your specific area your specific ground what grows there your seasons, all that stuff is going to, is going to play a part. But, uh, regardless of that, you know, if we can help you out, um, leave a comment, uh, chime in. And I want this to be a place of, uh, community where we can learn from each other and, uh, you know, folks, uh, families and, and whatnot, a local level, we can be independent. Uh, so hope you're having a good day and a good week. Take care.